guess what? We bought a Jeep. This is a 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon and it's pretty well loaded out. The only thing we're missing is um, the painted roof, uh, painted to match, uh, the painted fenders to match, and the leather seats, which I would probably like to have the painted roof, but the more I look at the truck, the more I kind of like it blacked out because it matches how the wheels and the fenders, etc. Didn't really want painted fenders because we drive it out somewhere where we scratch them up. It would really suck to scratch up that fancy paint. Whereas these black plastic ones, eh, that's what they're for. So you can see it comes with the Fox shocks. The dealer, uh, Jim Glover here locally, uh, did a good job. They put a two and a half inch lift in the front and then they put these 35, 12, 50 Nitto uh, trail, glapp trail glapp grappler uh, MTs on the 17 by nine uh, addictive desert design wheels which look awesome and i'm real thrilled with those again it's a rubicon uh, got all the goodies including the passive keyless entry looks like i said we have the cloth seats the rubicons have this red dash which is pretty rad um options wise this is a standard stuff on the rubicon with the locking front and rear differential disconnect sway bar and off-road plus mode this one is equipped this with this option, which is your accessory buttons. It's kind of nice. It's pre-wired uh, to run lights, etc. off of that. It has an 8.4 inch screen with the Alpine premium audio system. It has remote start. It has the LED premium lighting system. It has the trailer tow package, which the Rubicon comes with the Dana 44s and the 410 gear ratio which is awesome for towing pretty much ready to go as is also has this little neat option behind the back seat that is a bluetooth speaker so that's kind of a cool thing recharges while it's in the truck you power it up pair it with your phone pretty cool now, if there's one thing I've learned about Jeeps and Jeep people, guys and gals, is you don't leave them alone, although they're probably one of the most well-equipped from the factory off-road vehicles. They still have the high, uh, a really highly supported aftermarket, which I'm okay with that. But one thing about our Jeep that I didn't care for was it has the two and a half inch lift in the front, but they left the rear stock, which it can run 35 inch tires without any modification. But if you'll notice, as far as I'm concerned, level across the bed makes the truck look squatted because the rear fender uh fender openings or wheel well openings sorry actually sit lower on the body than the front ones do therefore giving it sort of a squatted look now i was doing some work a couple of days after i bought the truck and to uh, get a couple of tractors going and hauled out of a piece of property and just putting a couple hundred pounds worth of tools in the bed squatted it and that's not going to work for us i mean we've done airbags in the past on some of our other trucks and i could do airbags on this one as well but it's usually not conducive to off-roading when you have those bags and airlines etc so we're not going to do that called up my friends at rough country and they were awesome as they always are I said i'll tell you what we'll send you the rear springs out of our three and a half inch lift kit because they should lift it about two inches which according to my measurements is about what we need and they shipped them out the same day so those guys are awesome they're not a sponsor but they could be so if we kind of pick a spot to measure the height here we'll just say straight on and level with the opening we're going to call that about 40 inches now we go to the front do the same thing try to hold it pretty level about 42 and a half so two inches in the rear for that wheel well opening should be about perfect so when that stuff comes in we're gonna do our first mod 
And while we're waiting on the FedEx to deliver our parts, we went ahead and put the Gladiator up on jack stands and started taking it apart. So we started with the lower shock bolts, which are 21 millimeter socket and end wrench. Make sure you put your hardware back where you removed it from so you can find it later. Pro tip. Next, we want to remove the uh, lower mount of the anti-sway bar, which takes a 6mm Allen key and an 18mm wrench. Be real careful with this because those Allen key uh, things tend to strip out. You might apply a little bit of uh, penetrating oil and let it soak. If your Wrangler or Gladiator has had much use in the water, etc., and caused any corrosion. The upper bolt on that anti-sway bar link is an 18 millimeter socket and I just used my impact to run that out. You also want to remove that track bar bolt which just takes a 21 millimeter socket and impact. It does kind of prevent the rear axle from dropping down far as it potentially can so you're you have this thing supported with the jack most of the time when you get to this point you can take the jack out of the way and just press down on each side and pull those springs out be careful to keep those donuts uh, sometimes they may stick up in the frame and if they do you want to make sure you pull that down because it does have an index pin so our springs made it in of course these are the rough country these are the ones that come in the three and a half inch kit Apparently they will raise the rear of a stock gladiator about two inches. Now these are the stock springs that we removed. One thing I thought was cool that and I wanted to point out, I have them about even at the top. And if you'll notice, there are more coils on this spring and it's actually a little shorter. Whereas this spring has, well, potentially fewer number of coils, but are more spread out. And they do have different part numbers on the tag. So the reason this exists, or the reason these are different, is because the Gladiator only has one fuel tank, as most new, newer cars do, and it's on the passenger side, which leads me to believe that this spring is for the passenger side for that additional weight. Now I say passenger side, which may confuse many people, because the fuel filler door is on the driver's side of the car, truck, but the tank, is actually on the passenger side. Springs have to be different in order to support that so your truck's not sitting sideways uh, when it's loaded down with fuel on that side. So, pretty cool fact, don't see that that often. I mentioned earlier about making sure that you kept track of this donut and the index pin because it does have a location that it's supposed to be in the frame and your spring needs to sit against this uh, end piece as well. So what I'm going to do is take some duct tape and go ahead and tape this thing into place up in the frame so I don't have to monkey with it when I'm putting the spring in and the tape's not going to hurt anything when we're finished. Actually, I could reach in there and tear it off of everything except probably between the spring and this and the donut itself, but certainly not going to hurt a thing. Now once we get our spring in there, we want to make sure it's indexed um, with that donut properly. Then we can let go of the pressure of our bottle jack. And everything's good. Bottle jack is definitely a pro tip. I haven't seen anyone else video use this, but it just makes sense to me and you don't have another person to literally be in your way trying to stand on this side of your axle, why not let that do the work? Just be safe. So here's a view from underneath. This is our way of ensuring that we uh, placed our spring properly on the donut. 
before we get too far along, the other one's on the inside. So, kind of harder to see, but it is done properly. So you could or could not decide if you want to take that tape out of your way. I don't really care to be honest with you. It's not gonna hurt anything. So at this point, we're just gonna put things back together in reverse of the way that we took it apart, and then we'll test drive it. One quick thing I wanted to point out, you may have to drill this uh, sway bar out to a half inch, just use a half inch drill bit um, to fit the hardware that uh, Rough Country sends you uh, for the lower portion of that link. Uh, the top portion from the factory uh, has a nut welded to the bracket. Your hardware kit should have the longer 12 millimeter bolt to use in place of the factory one up top. Anytime you do suspension mods or mess with the springs, etc., you should really take it for a test drive before doing any measuring because they tend to settle. If I had a first impression about how it drives, it might be a little bouncy in the back compared to stock, but we've got our shock at nearly max length extension. That kind of changes where it's valved to ride. Or it doesn't change where it's valve to ride. It's riding outside of the area where it's supposed to. So we could probably blame it on that. All right, so we're back in the garage from our test drive. Went a couple of miles on a pretty rough road. It may settle a little bit more. Uh, check back and see if it does. But anyway, let's look at the moment of truth. Now before I put this tape, which was hard to see outside, but I was actually measuring on the bottom edge of that lip which according to the camera right now is right, well, potentially it would be just a shade under 42 inches. So right here is where we're, where we're looking for. So as of right now, we increased the height at the wheel well opening an inch and seven eighths, which we were looking for the two inches. And honestly, the truck probably has more fuel in it than it did when we measured it the first time. So, once again, good for you, Rough Country. You know exactly what you were selling me. So there's one more thing we need to check. So at full extension, this stock Rubicon Fox shot is right at 25 and a half inches of length. So if I measure it now with this new spring in here, it's about 23 and a half inches to center. So we're not in a big rush, but at least now we know that we would need our shock to probably have at least three more inches of travel. So a 26 and a half or a 27 inch maximum length extended shock would probably work great for our application. So I'm gonna leave you with this photo at the end so you can see the comparison between the before and after photos. Anyway, drop me a message if you have any questions. Once again, I can't thank the guys at Rough Country enough for being awesome and not blaming any shortcomings on the COVIDs. Anyway, that's it and that's all. We'll see you later, y'all.